Hello and welcome to the 10x Detail Podcast, bringing you the success stories and entrepreneurial journeys of amazing detailing professionals. Learn how to grow your business, avoid costly mistakes, and keep focused on what matters the most. Discover how keeping an open mind and being eager to learn new skills from others is an amazing way to boost your business and yourself. Are you ready to 10x your detailing business? Great. Let's get on with the show. Welcome to the 10X Detail Podcast. I have a very special guest here today, David Avrin, who is a well-known author, speaker, and business owner from Denver, Colorado. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine, my friend. Looking forward to this. Excellent, excellent. And he is an avid car guy and marketer, visibility coach. Today, we're going to talk about his book. I'm going to ask him some questions about you know how we can help detailers make more money, meaning how to get out there and boost your business, boost your sales. Dave is going to talk about some of the things in his book. I've been going over his book. There's a lot of great information. I have some awesome questions to ask him. But first, please tell us a little bit about yourself and how things are going over there. Sure. Thank you for having me on the show. Listen, I um, I, I am a car guy like like you are. I uh, It's a, a great opportunity to to talk to others who, who, who love what we love. But I'm a marketing guy. I'm a customer experience guy. I work with, with businesses, organizations across the America and around the world. I've, I've spoken in 24 different countries. We just launched my new book in, in Mumbai, India, first week of, of December before the uh, the virus and everything else hit. But my whole thing is about competitive advantage. It's not it's not can you, it's why you. There's so many people in almost every industry, and certainly we talk detail shops as well, we are just so good at what they do, but there's others who are good at what they do. And for many of us who are looking at, you know, keeping our car in, in great shape, the easiest choice in the marketplace, in a marketplace full of choices, the easiest choice is to choose nobody or to put it off for a couple of weeks or just go through the car wash. And then, you know, they'll, they'll do that. And then we vacuum out the interior, but I have great respect for people who have, who have hung a shingle. They're, they're working, they're, they're working hard every day to pay their, pay their people to feed their families. And so my whole mission is to help people differentiate, stand out in a competitive marketplace and to promote the great work that they do so they can build their business. Yes. And, and I do, uh, use that same kind of logic to help others market their business. And yeah. one of the things I, I, one of the quick questions that I wanted to ask you first was as a professional marketer in other other realms and you travel the world detailers that some of them they can they can polish a car like crazy but a lot of them wait for a customer to come in the door right. and they might have a a list of maybe 200 people maybe 2000 people I don't care if it's two people I tell them and this is one of the things that and I wanted to ask you your opinion on this is I think they should be touching those customers going back to what is at the book utility and a couple other ones touching your customers at least once a week but in a different way phone call right. text message uh a an email and a postcard that way you know they get the postcard maybe they didn't read the email maybe they didn't read the text message but they got a postcard are they ever going to forget who you are and if you could just take the time to do that especially in this downtime that we have what do you think about that marketing strategy well i, I think what i want to talk about is is strategy before tactics i mean i agree with all of those but but the real question is the why? I mean, what's it, what's this going uh -huh. to accomplish for you? Mm -hmm. And the reality is that we all in business, we all have fans, I mean, people who we've done good work for in the past. What boggles my mind is how reluctant people are to ask for referrals, to ask people to say nice things about them, because, you know, it sounds like we're bragging or something else, or maybe they'll say something really, you know, hey, go online, throw in a good review. We'd really appreciate it. Let's be more specific. When somebody comes back to their car, they're in the shop, it's mobile or otherwise, and they go, oh my God, like, like unbelievable. Like this looks so good. How many people have the courage at that moment to grab their phone, hold it in front of them, say, you say that again? I mean, the reality is we have to activate our fans. We have to keep in touch with them. Absolutely. But what are we doing when we're keeping in touch? We're not just offering them deals and sales and reminding them that we're here. We need to activate them. We're in a very different time in our history. People trust what we call social proof almost more than what you say about yourself. This is sort of the big shift in my business. I spent almost 20 years talking marketing and branding. In my first book, It's Not Who You Know, It's Who Knows You. And I wrote Visibility Marketing 
but I sort of came to the recognition in the last few years that, that what we say about ourselves is important, but it's far less meaningful than what our customers say about us, right? We're always looking for validation and safety, right? We go online and we look up Yelp and TripAdvisor and Rotten Tomatoes and Glassdoor. We're always looking to avoid making a bad choice. So anybody that we're looking to do business with, we go online and make sure that they don't suck, right? Right, we right. Third, online, third sure party people, credibility. Yeah. We make sure that, that people haven't trashed them. So instead of just making sure that we mitigate the people who are doing us damage, you know, we make sure that we, we make sure everybody's pleased to some extent. That's a whole other conversation we can have. But on the positive side, can we flood the internet with positive comments and videos and quotes and endorsements? That alone, you're talking about 10xing your business. You cannot 10x your business without positive online reviews, without social proof, without other people saying that they like you because we'll all go and look. Now that alone doesn't do it, but the absence of that or even worse, the contrary to that, which is negative reviews online, it'll kill your business. I absolutely so agree. I love your idea. And, and, I love your idea about reaching out, but let's reach, reach out with incentives to post positive comments, incentives for special programs for referrals, right? We're not just informing, we're activating our people. Yes. And not just that the referral part is that, yeah, that's part of the, maybe this, the third email in on the third month. Hey, do you have any friends or family that have another nice car yeah. like yours, et cetera, et cetera. But on the flip side, I want to talk about what you talked about is I've been, a lot of these guys, they get a car in, they do it, the car drives away and they say, oh, I did this great Maserati. Oh, where's the pictures? Uh, no pictures. Right. right. It's not coming back. Pictures, videos, pictures, yeah. everything. And listen, what do they say? The best time to plant a tree was 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. The, the second best time is right today. Now. Yes. So even if you haven't done it in the past, don't beat yourself up. It is time to start. You need evidence of the great work that you do. Constant. Listen, I speak for a living. Everything for me is about having video footage, video evidence of the quality that I deliver on stage. You know, what do they say? Video or it didn't happen, right? You know, yes. somebody brags about saying, ah, video or it didn't happen. Uh, you'll be stunned at how willing your clients would be to say nice things about you. You just have to ask. And sometimes they're all worried or like you hold up the phone and say, and they'll go, oh God, I'm just uh, I'm terrible at this. And I always look at them and I say, listen, if it sucks, I won't use it. But you know, <laughs> say, just look right here and just say, hey, listen, I just had my car brought in to, to super special sudsy wash, whatever, and just say some nice things. And you hold up and they will. Sure. It's awesome. You know, and maybe you got to Starbucks gift cards, maybe you got whatever else, but that will so build your business. Now, the, the foundation, of course, and Dave, you understand this, you got to be great at what you do, yes. but but being great at what you do, that's the entry fee today. The problem with most marketing in this category and everything sort of in the, in the automotive from car wash to automotive is we talk about our competency. Like, here's what we're good at. We're this, we really, you know, our, our people and our caring and our honesty and integrity and trust and and our people make the difference. The problem is that's generally true for your competitors as well. And please, God, don't come, don't dismiss your competitors. Everybody's good. You know, you may be higher end, you may have more capabilities, but uh, but people are, these are good people. Now, there is no real cost to entry. And you got a lot of people with you know, a Mazda and, and a bucket and, and some scrub. Even for those of you who are successful, you probably started that way too. The point is we all have options of where we're going to go. And the easiest option is just, like I said, putting it off. So instead of talking about just here's what we're good at, you have to, that's part of sort of the, the foundation. You have to show that you're competent at this. Tell me what you do differently. What do you do different or better or faster or smarter or cleaner or with some new technology? Tell me what you do differently than others who do what you do well. Or put it in context. Listen, there's no shortage of, of car washes that can you know, let you sit in your car and you drive through, but here's what you're missing. There's no shortage of guys in a van, whatever, but here's what you're missing. You're the guy in the van. You know, there's other ways of, of competing. I'm not looking to disparage. I'm looking for you to say, here's what makes us different. Here's what makes us special. Dave, here's what's really interesting about my message today. And with my new book, for those of you watching this on video, it's why customers leave and how to win them back is I kind of went on this, this campaign, this research about what if companies do that piss you off? You know, I mean, I was doing a great job. I was driving business to my customers. I was getting them on Oprah and Good Morning America. And then they would just frustrate them with something. So I set about sort of figuring out what are some of the things that we do. And what I came to realize is that for a lot of businesses, your competitive advantage is just being remarkably easy to do business with, just remarkably convenient 
convenient, remarkably responsive to your customers because our customers have changed. I speak on customer experience. That's my primary gig today. And I don't talk about customer service because I think everybody knows customer service. We're friendly. We, you know, right. The experience is different. How do we expect to do business differently? And during the pandemic and beyond, we've learned that we can do things differently. We've learned that certain things that we can schedule on an app or the conversation that you and I, Dave, are having right now, uh, recording this over Zoom. I, I used to have like one out of five calls would be a video call. Today, it's nine out of 10. Almost every call is video. And if you're trying to reach somebody, can you reach them? I mean, here, here's one of the biggest offenses. And for those of you listening or watching, I want you to think about this because it's going it, to, it applies to more people than you believe. If a contact form is your primary way of getting a hold of you, you will never 10x your business. No. You will, you are losing 85% of your prospective customers because people don't want to fill out the form. Now, you might be saying people fill out our form. You have no idea how many people go, where's a freaking phone number? I mean, like we, we go to websites, right? We, we have somebody, we have a question for some company. It doesn't even matter what category. We cannot find a freaking phone number like anywhere on this page. And the reality is they made a conscious decision. We're not going to let our customers call us. Now, you may be a one or two man shop and you're out on the road and you can't always answer your phone. And if they cannot reach a real person, most people just call somebody else. I ask audiences all the time. I live just south of Denver and I'm out here in the burbs in a cul-de-sac and I had some sprinkler heads in my lawn that were shooting straight up in the air. Somebody had rototilled and busted some sprinkler heads and it's shooting water straight up. And I keep saying, I'm going to fix it. And I'm not going to fix it. I'm, sure, I'm not. And I, but what did I do? I went to Craigslist. There's a whole list of sprinkler repair and installation people near my home in Castle Rock, Colorado. I called the first one on the list, but I got voicemail. And here's the question. Did I leave a message? Yes or no? No. I, I just called the next one. And I called the next one until somebody answered. And if the price was okay, I hired them. I didn't. I Now, should I have left? No. Why? There's so many choices. I want you to think about this. If you have detailing business, if there's not some way for a real person to answer the phone, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have life balance or listen, logistically, we can't whatever. Just know you're losing business because most people won't leave a message. They won't fill out your contact form. The contact form is the voicemail of the internet. These are structural things we need to be to be remarkably accessible. Um, just, and even if you're, you're, you got a family member, even somebody, I, I, 24 hours a day, I did a call last night at 10 p.m. with a client in India. I've got clients in, in Sri Lanka that I'll do a call at two o'clock in the morning. And I've got a nice jacket on. What's happening from the waist down is none of your business. But I'm the one saying yes. I'm accommodating everything. We are entering an age of extraordinary accommodation. And if you say no, somebody else is going to say yes. I totally agree. And and that's where a lot of these detailers during this pandemic have shifted to, you know, doing more antimicrobial and biological things with different machines Absolutely. because maybe some of them are still open. Maybe some of them are shut down and maybe operating in the shadows and, but the customers weren't coming in. So they had to pivot and go somewhere else and do something else. And that's where I right. got on the whole podcast thing. I've done 75 podcasts in the last four weeks, talking to people, hearing about all these problems, telling them to do what they got to do. And one of the things that, you know, I get from Tony Robbins is you can talk all day long, but if you don't have an action plan, so some of my action plans go, Going back to what you were saying earlier is have a habits and ritual plan, you know, get the video camera out, take the before, during and after, get that testimonial with that customer yes, and post that stuff on the web right then and there. Don't wait. Right. And it doesn't have to be a video camera, right? You know, I mean, we're, we're speaking, you know, broadly, but your phone is fine. It's high depth. That's what I meant. Yeah. But, the video is on your phone. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. I got it. But, and, and you're right with the, the Tony Robbins, but here's my quote, just the fact that you're taking all of these safety precautions, and I assume everybody is, if you are communicating that effectively, it does you no good. There's a great line that says, doing business without promotion, without promoting it, is like winking at somebody in the dark. You know what you're doing, but nobody else does. So we have to balance our message during this time with what are the precautions that we're taking? Because here's, we got to get back to work. Yes. We have to be safe. We have to be distanced, but we have to get back to work. People are losing everything in every sector. I mean, it's just, it's really tragic right now. I'm not taking a position. Listen, I'm a science guy. And I believe the science and the people who, 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 are, who are far more educated than I am to understand this. But I also know business and we have to get back to work. So we have to balance the whole idea of what are we doing to keep things safe and to distance and to protect our families and our employees and their families. So we have to communicate all that, but we can't stop communicating also what makes us great, right? Our, our, right. It may be a message and it may be the leading message in terms of the the, uh, the accommodations and the, and the pivots that we're making to make sure that everybody's, but we also have to tell people that we're open and we're here to serve them yes. and that 
as much as we've been feeling cramped up inside and whatever else, um, it's time to to give a little love and attention to your baby in the driveway, right? Yes, and, we and go out even if, and and some of these people ahead, no, are, are 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 they're cooped up and they they want to get their car done, but oh, I don't know if I. So they that some of them have uh, modified their procedures. You know what? Park in front of the building, leave the keys in, text me, and then sure. we'll come out and take care of it. And we don't even have to meet. You could pay us a online. Reasonable or accommodation. Think about all of the touchless deliveries that we're doing now, right? That the pizza delivery, we don't have to sign for. Anything, just they just leave it. I mean, I'm having we're we're learning to do business differently. I'm having my groceries delivered. This is the greatest thing on the planet. I have never done this before, and I'm never going back. Now, granted, I'll go to buy specific <laughs> things, but but I love things being uh, delivered. I've also talked to people in the construction industry where they've got teams coming in and they're just alternating shifts. So when somebody's coming in and doing the window work, the other people are leaving, they're working on a different part of, of the building or the structure, or they're doing split shifts. It's what we have to do. Uh, so before so they would they would be on top of each other in the same room doing exactly electrical right. and everything. I see. But we still have to work. So part of what we have to do is communicate what it is that we're doing, but don't stop communicating what makes you great. Now, here's where I think there's, there's a real opportunity that some people are, I think, are missing during this time, no matter no matter when you're watching or listening to this podcast, um, whether it's during it or in the time afterwards, is there's an opportunity. We've been given a gift that none of us wanted, and that gift is is time, right? And even if you have people who are um, sort of have downtime right now, uh, or they are they're brought back in, or they're working remotely, if you got the PPP um, through the government, part of the requirement is that you keep your people employed. But just because you've gotten the the payroll protection money doesn't mean that your people have to be dormant. This is one of the things I'm talking to organizations across America right now: is repurpose your people if they aren't necessarily doing the work and Hopefully some are right now and we're beginning to open up. Repurpose them. What was that thing in that your warehouse or your location that's always bothered you? Go fix it. Refigure out your entire supply chain or your process internally. Um, paint your warehouse. Organize your warehouse. Throw away all the crap in your storage room. This is the time to get better. Because here's the reality. As we record this in mid-May, it's going to get worse. It just is. Um, so we better get better. And this is our time to get better. Three months from now, you're going to wish you started today. Yes. Look at every point of contact along your customer's journey. How do they research you? How do they contact? How fast do you get back to them? Can they reach a real person? Um, can they do a quote online? Is there things that they can do? Do you have an app that helps facilitate it? Is there a way to do something without contact or touchless through an app, through whatever? Look at every point of contact and ask the question, is that the way it should be done? It's the way we do it. It's the way our competitors do it. Maybe it's how our industry works, but it's not the question I asked. Is that the way it should be done? Or maybe how might it be done a year from now? as we look into the future, because here's one of the hard things is, and businesses across the board is we are for the first time being compared against businesses and industries that have nothing to do with what we do. We always had to be one of the best sort of in our category. Well, now we're being compared. It's like, you don't know when that delivery is going to show up. Really? Uber knows. There's their car. They're going to be here in 11 minutes and they're at this stoplight. Why can't you do that? Now, is that a fair comparison? Of course not. Okay, so what? What, you can't deliver overnight? Amazon can, right? I can't see the status. Listen, my daughter would tell you a really funny story. So a couple of years ago, my daughter turned 16 and within a week of getting her car, some little bastard hit her in the parking lot of, of her high school. So I think he had just gotten his license and he backed out and hit her or whatever else. So I had to go get her car repaired. And so we found a place. And of course, we looked online. We found out what was covered under her insurance and then at reviews. We turned it in there. And the next day I got a text message from her car. And it said, just to let you know, they're taking really good care of me. Um, I've gone through the inspection. They're going to wheel me in tomorrow. I'm really excited. I can't wait to whatever else. And the next day, oh my gosh, what a great day. They rubbed all over the front. They fixed my bumper. It was the cutest thing. It was actually really cool. <laughs> And so not only did I not have to call to find out the status, her car told me the status every day. Now, I granted it was something that's probably on an automatic something, but it was awesome. It made me something I remembered. I talked to others about. Think about what your customers want and expect today that maybe wasn't true two years ago. Do they want to know the status? Are they calling you? Are you getting an unusual or, or a usual amount of calls of people saying, where's my car? When's it going to be done? Are we still on track? I need it by whatever else. Are you being bombarded by it? Well, your customers are telling me what they want, which is an easier way to get status updates. So do they get automatic text messages? There's technologies that, that allow that for this. really the good. The fun 
thing about the exercise, the fun thing about the exercise, sort of looking at every point and saying, what if we could do it differently? Like what would our customers love? What would be really cool? So I, I work with organizations. Sometimes I'll do full day sessions. I have these really cool exercises where I get everybody working together in teams. And like one of them has everybody working on a different point of contact and asking the question, if we could redesign that, what would we do differently to make it memorable and convenient? And like I said, sometimes being the best choice is just being easy to do business with, right? And just make it a no-brainer. Not everybody's creating wow moments. I think we create a wow finish, yes, right? Yes. I don't think the process is supposed to be wow. I mean, we're getting our car cleaned, right? But the end should but, be wow. But a lot of people do okay. like a lot of people do like to see the process. So that's what I'm I'm asking these guys to turn yeah. on the camera. You know what? We're gonna feature you on Facebook today. Check it out. Your your Porsche is gonna be front and center, and you're gonna see those swirls disappear. And by Love lunch, it. we're gonna give you the 50 50 Love shot, it. and then we're gonna give you the final yeah. shot. And then Get you're gonna be in, in here yeah. picking up your car on on Facebook Live. Yeah, I love it. Well, think about the shows. Think about the stuff where we're getting a little bit spoiled, like overhauling and things like that, right? We love watching these shows where they take a junk car and turn into, but what's really cool is the process, right? We love the reveal, but we love the process. Um, I had my, uh, excuse me, I had a client who did landscaping, like really high-end landscape. And so one of the things that we worked out together is that they do a stationary camera that they don't leave on site, but they they have it literally marked on the ground. And every day um, at the beginning and the end of every day, uh, and multiple times a day, I think on some of them, they take a still picture. Uh, and so when they do really cool processes, they just do a time-lapse video. But all of that stuff's available for the client. So they can look at any time and they can see, uh, oh, they do a live stream so that they can see the status of where things are. But they also do at the end of the project, they give them a time-lapse of as it's being built and they give it to them as a gift. What did that cost them? Cost them nothing. And they can put that in a screen, like in the lobby and and it was just something for somebody to watch. Yeah. Yeah. But each one of their clients, um, because these are really expensive homes, they get that to show their friends. And of course their friends say, Hey, I want some of that. And then they get great referrals. It creates something that's memorable. It's something other people aren't doing, right? Because their competitors are all doing high-end landscaping and they're all good, right? So what do you get different? What makes somebody want to talk about? you. And so part of understanding our customers on a deeper level today is understanding how they want to do business. They want convenience. They want visibility into the process. They want confidence in terms of the timeline. But we spend most of our time talking about how clean we make their cars look. You do, it's true, but so do your competitors, at least on your level, right? There's varying price levels and varying levels of capabilities among detailers. But the others who do what you do at your price level are all good. There's not a company that couldn't disappear from the face of the earth and the marketplace would be fine without. I'm not diminishing the quality of what you do, but I'm saying when we just talk about our quality and then other people talk about their quality, we wonder why people call and they just want a price quote. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you insight. When somebody calls and say, listen, I just want a quote. I just want a price quote. And you think that's all they care about. They just care about price. It is so not true. They really care about their car being clean. They care about it being taken care of. They just assume you're the same as your competitors, right? If they go online and they look at your website and they look at their website, we're all saying the same things. Then they've already checked you out. They assume everybody's good. When they call you and ask for price, they're at the end of the process. They've already decided that everybody's good. And it's only come down to price because they assume that you're the same. You never even had a chance to talk to them. You think they don't even care about that. They just care. No, they, they've already decided everything else is good. And now it is about price. Can we work farther upstream? Can we show them what we do different, our unique approach, our proprietary approach? You know, proprietary doesn't mean patented. It just means our way of doing things. The best story, here's your automotive example. We all know Mr. Goodwrench, right? Mr. Goodwrench is if you take your car to a genuine GM dealer and it's the Mr. Goodwrench guarantee. Mr. Goodwrench was just the checklist that they had in the garage. It was a marketing person who said, so tell me about your process. We do this and we have a a 10 point system and everything. I said, so what is that? That's just our, it's our, our checklist. They branded it. They called it the Mr. Goodwrench guarantee. It's just that everybody has a checklist, but they branded it. Right. So everybody, wow, it's that level of service. Everybody, because it's just brilliant. I wish I had come up with it, but I didn't. But um, instead of just saying we're really good, which is important, make sure that we know it's different. And maybe what makes you different is just that you're more convenient. Maybe you have convenient hours. Maybe you have mobile pickup. Maybe it's a touch-free something. Just give them something to remember you by and something for others who like you, who love you. You to talk about you. Yes. And I have a question here that uh, I wanted to ask you, but real quick, sure. my, my motto for my Pearl Nano business is dare to be different because there was so many same old, same olds out there. And I'm like, I want to be different. And I want to, and some of the ways that I am different is when you call me, I answer. They're like, but it's Sunday at four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't care. 
my phone rings, I answer it. And I you use betcha. my personal cell phone and my 1-800 number goes to my personal cell phone. So I do things differently. It doesn't matter if I'm traveling. Unless I'm in a plane and my phone doesn't reach, I'm pretty much going to answer the phone. So It's so funny. We have the exact same language. I always say, unless I'm on, on an airplane or on stage, you know, and now even on an airplane when we're flying, um, I'm available, you know, unless I'm on United and their Wi-Fi sucks. But other than that, <laughs> um, but so, yeah, it's so, been but remarkably excessive. I work 20, I work all the time. Uh, you had talked about in your book about about the the wow the Nordstrom and I I shop at Nordstroms because of the same things that you talked about you know they wow you if you need something where'd she go oh she got she went and got four of the same that look similar and I tried them all on okay only one one fit and I really like having the concierge service there versus going to Macy's sure. or somewhere else I think that's really really important and uh, well, it depends on your on your level it depends on your pricing level right. There, there's not this is a good, so. this is a good industry for wow moments but when i'm working with people who sell auto parts that fit into auto holes there's no wow you know what's what's wow is is don't make me listen don't make don't put me on hold for for 20 minutes don't wait me you know don't make me wait for i mean don't make me do your job you know it's the answer is yes you know i, I mentioned a minute about about life balance i'm doing calls 24 7 people say what about balance i'm saying they're not calling every day but the fact that i answer i'll get the business if they have somebody leaves a message I will have the, a contract, I will have it negotiated, and I'll have my flight reserved before my competitors even respond. Yes. That's how responsive we are. And I have some Fortune and, 500 companies or bigger companies like that, you know, being co contacted by some of my customers in Mexico and other places. And they're like, well, we called you and you answered. We have we, six weeks ago, we called the XYZ company and they still haven't got back with yeah. us. What's hard is the small professional service providers, landscapers, auto detailers, people who are out working in the field and we'll call you when we get back at the end of the day. The world is different. You, you got to find you got to find an alternative, whether it's a spouse, whether it's it's you've got a headset on while you're working on their car and you can tap your ear and answer while you're working. I'm just telling you, you're losing all of those, a vast majority of those prospective clients just because somebody else answers the phone. Uh, it's it, We have become impatient. We've become intolerant. Don't blame the millennials. <laughs> it's everybody about when uh -huh. I'm on stage. I said, listen, we all want what we want now. I said, I could, I could go. And for all of you listening and watching right now, I, I could go to your house, go to your apartment, drive up, walk through your house, walk into your kitchen and look at your microwave oven right now. And I guarantee you it's at two seconds or three because you couldn't wait the last two, five or three. Two, oh, you're done. Just that's I'm hungry, right? It's all of us. Yes. yes. You know, and and if, it, if you make it complicated, because here, let me tell you a quick dynamic. And I don't want to go long on this, but I think this part's really important. We design our business processes because it works. Right? There's so much in this world that's out of our control. We can't control the economy. We can't control worldwide pandemics or policies or even our competitors. But we control is, is our process. Here's how they do it. Here's what we fill out. Right, Because then we have a greater level of predictability of process and behavior and purchasing yes. and profit. Here's the problem, friends. Your customers have never read your employee manual. They just know the way they want to do it. And, and it makes sense if you're Chipotle. right? You line up here, you order here, you customize it, you pay for it, and you get your drink and sit down. We kind of have to do whatever they want. The answer is yes. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to be unprofitable, but we have to be really clear at, like I said, looking at the point of contact. And if something is frustrating, we, we're making them jump through hoops. If I'm at Walmart and I got a cart over full and I'm walking up to check out and the manager motions me to self checkout and I'm like, um, oh, sorry, no, I don't work here. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm not being demeaning. I'm bad at this. There is never an item that's not an unexpected item in the bagging area. Do it for me. Give me choices. I know that, that there's always going to be a trend towards do it yourself. There's certain things I think auto detailing is one of them. The reason we're hiring you is because we don't want to do it ourselves. Yes. Don't make us fill out 20 pages of forms. Don't make us wait on hold. Don't make us, right? I mean, as much as you can be of service and make it convenient and create, as we said, some of those wow experiences, the process can be wow as well. They're much more likely to brag about us to others. That's how we build our business. That's how we 10 times it. Yes, right? yes. And one of the things that you mentioned in the book as well is to cater to this, to their needs. And you just mentioned that just there. Uh, some of the high-end detailers, they have price points of $1,000, 2500 $4,000. Sure. Well, some people get sticker shock. And then I talk to them 
and say, hey, maybe you need a $500 heat enhancement versus the 95% perfect. You spent three days polishing on it. Maybe, you know, the 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 mom or the busy business person, either they can't afford it, they don't have the time to wait three days, have a different package, but you have to yeah. listen to what their needs are first and then tell them how you're different. And those and understand, understand our customers. No, people have every right to say, we're only going to be a high end. That's fine. But if you have things at different levels, I mean, that money spends pretty good. I mean, if you know, you can get 10 clients who are willing to spend $500, which is still a good amount of money, um, that's good sustainable revenue. But I'm a big believer in, there, there's a couple of different pricing strategies. One of them is, is you sort of give them the bare bones and here's what it is. You don't give them anything in the middle and say, or there's the platinum and you get this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And they're like, well, I, I want all of those. When my daughter had her senior pictures taken, they they gave me one thing where you could get one choice for or two choices and one something for $500 or for four thousand oh, dollars you get this whole thing and it was and firstly she took the pictures first so there's like 50 pictures they, they treat them like a model for the day there's different sets there's all this stuff and basically i have to look at my then 18 year old daughter and my ex-wife and she's going, really dad so i don't get all so i don't get any of these pictures we spent the whole day and i don't get any of these things and i like literally looked at the person who's running this thing going oh what a racket this is but of course i bought the expensive package because we wanted all of those things and they didn't give me a mediocre middle of the road. So there's some interesting strategies for all of this. But I like the idea of doing a matrix. So you print it out, whether it's comparing yourself to your competitors or your high end to your low end. It's you list all the things that you can do. And of course, your best thing has check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. And your lowest one has just a couple of check marks. Or you do that as a marketing piece against your competitors. Here's what the industry does. We do this and this and this and this. They only do this one and this one. This one only does this one and this one, right? And now we can really visually see why you're different. And for those who have the money, who want to do that, you know, really take care of it, it's really visual for them to understand what they get. Right. They spend a lot of money in the car. They only want the very best. They've heard that you're the very best. Hey, I, I want the the top tier. I had a, a other they quick want people to ooh, yeah. they want people to ooh and awe over their car. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I, I noticed something today that I wanted to bring up. Uh one of the guys I trained just recently, he posted rest in peace all the prospects that called for a uh an estimate or how much my prices are and never called back. And I yeah. just, you know, that that is such, so because they opposite. Were already at the end of the process. Yes, you it, should it have mean your instead of wrong. instead of telling them the prices, you got to give them the value and how you're different, all the things that we just right. talked about. It, what what else could you add to that? Well, I think it, that's part of it, but I think most of the research starts without. So all of that has to be evident on your website. It has to be evident in your marketing. If they're calling you and they just want, they say, well, we need to see the car. No, 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 I just want to quote. Yeah, but we need to be able to see. They just think, oh, it's a racket, right? We do have to communicate all the differences, but you can say, but if they ask for the price, you can't not give them the price. I've had enough conversations. They will don't do it. They have, they just won't go in. I had to get some windows replaced and, and I called one of the reputable companies and they said, we do not give quotes over the phone. I said, I will give you measurements and I'll take pictures. Nope. We come in and it has to be a, a mandatory 60 minute, whatever. And I'm like, I'm not sitting for that because I had seven others who gave me a price quote. Now as a retailer that frustrates us, I get that. But the reason I only cared about price is because I had already done all the research. I knew what they all did. So your marketing starts before your conversation. Your marketing starts with your pictures on your websites, the videos that you post on YouTube and social media with the, the comparisons that you create that shows the differences. And then if they are just calling for the price, say, listen, I'm going to give you the price, but I want you to know we're not comparing apples to apples. So we have competitors, never trash your competitors. They're fine. They're good people and they do good work. We do exceptional work. And the question is if, and that's, here's what it costs. Here's what they'll do. Here's what we'll do. Here's the 10 more things we do that they won't. And that will justify the price. Doesn't mean everybody can afford you, but, um, but we have to draw the distinction, the differentiation that that spells out why the price is what it is. Picture yes, evidence yes, and all yes. the above. Yes, but with cars, it's a little bit different. You know, it's like how much to do my car? Well, what kind of car? You know, what, how, what year? Yeah. There, there's a time frame on it takes from two hours to paint correct a car to 20 hours. And there is a price difference in between there. It's very hard over the phone, but you we're, know. We're, yeah. we're on, but we're on the same page. Yes, I'm not saying absolutely. that, I'm saying if it came down to that, it's because your prospect didn't see a difference between you and others. 
I'm not saying that we don't need to see it to do an accurate one. Right. I agree with you 100%. Or it starts do. at link. But start way back when. Start with your website. Start with your social oh, media. Oh, oh no. I know. I, I, what I meant was price. It, it starts at $900 upon inspection and goes up. But yes, definitely yeah. goes back to the beginning of your business as you make it better. Sure. Yes. I mean, we, we have to be honest with all of it. But here's the reality. If your prospects think that you're essentially the same as your competitors, and I will tell you in advance, they do, that's your fault. And it's also your opportunity, right? It's your fault because the the words you've used to describe what you do are largely the same as what your competitors. So why would I pay more for somebody who describes their business the exact same way? So do some research, see what your competitors are all saying, make sure that we're not replicating, making sure that we're differentiating and not just talking about our capabilities and what we're good at. Okay, you're really good at this. So are they, how much do you cost? This is your opportunity to start today. Right, right. And, and if you could show the, the, uh, different your differentiation with the, your YouTube channel, you know, the trusted authority. Oh, well, nobody knows who those guys are, but they have a website. And then here you are, right. the trusted authority. And they have people saying yes. how great you are, right? Yes, oh my God, these guys are freaking awesome. Like I could not believe it. I've had my car wash before. I have never, ever had anything like this before. I Going down the street, watching everybody's head turn, is the greatest moment in the world for me. Every one of you listening to this has heard comments like that. How many of you have documented it? How many of you have recorded it and shared it? The good news is you likely do great work. Now we have to make sure that uh, that we're not, nobody wants to be the best kept secret. It's not something to brag about. <laughs> I have another right? question for you. Is every, yeah. not everybody is your customer, right? No, yes. we, we don't have to be the best choice for everybody, but we have to be the best choice for the right people. You, you know, the old 2080 rule, the 2080 yes. rule says 20% of your customers are going to constitute 80% of your revenue. Only market to them. Most of us aren't independently wealthy. It doesn't mean that we won't take the other business. Absolutely. Focus your attention on the people who will see you and go, that's what I need. It's exactly what I've been looking for. Or contrast this market. to another per Maybe the person's a jerk face and you don't want to do business with them i say oh, fire yeah. them you know i had a call yesterday yeah. they had a, a very expensive car it had a matte paint job on it and they wanted to put my ceramic coating on there the paint job was eighty thousand dollars if we, they were to mess it up and i'm like you know this is how you do it and uh you know and then they ended up not doing the job because they just couldn't right. stomach it no listen it's nice to be in a position to be successful enough to turn down business you don't want to do because a It'll be a, a pain in the ass for you. It'll make your employees miserable having to work with them. They're never going to be happy anyway, except today is different than it was 10 years ago. We have to make them, help them understand it's for their benefit or whatever else, or mitigate their opposition, or maybe somebody's mad about something. You can't just write people off because they're going to go online and trash you. And that yes. can't happen because the internet is forever. So one of the advice that I give, I have a video series. And one of the things I talk about is this specifically of saying, listen, if you come to the point where you realize I got to fire this customer, do one last thing for them to make, even if it costs you money, just to make them feel like they at least were heard, or I'm probably not the best fit, but let me give you some, re some examples, or let me do one last time, but I'm going to tell you, we have to be done at that point because we have our families to feed. And then we need to be done with this. Give them one last thing, even if it just like gnaws at your craw to, to do that, because we can't let people leave unhappy. That's a whole other issue, but yes. it's a different, we're in a different time today. But it's nice to be in a position, you're not catering to everybody. You want to be the best choice for the right customers. And when we try to appeal for everybody, um, I call that taking your marketing through the deflavorizer, which means anything that appeals to one and not another, we take that out. Next thing you know, we're talking about our quality and commitment and caring and trust in people just like our competitors. So be clear on your market. What would they love? What do they, what frustrates them? And align how you do business to what your best customers want. One of the exercises that I do when I, when I consult as well is understand what are your, what would your best customers love and hate and fear and make sure that we're doing business the way they want. And what do they need? And what is it? What's their problem? And how do you say yes to you? Oh yes. Yeah. Right. And, and the solution, they, so, they, they, they came to you as with a problem and, and you need to have the solution or maybe you right. don't. And you know, maybe I just can't ceramic coat that $80,000 paint job. I just, so Right. Excellent. Excellent. And then how, how is your Jeep doing? You, you got some big tires on it, My right? My Jeep is awesome. I have, I just got new tires on them too. It's, it's pretty jacked up. My son wants to go full zombie apocalypse <laughs> with the machine gun turret on the back and everything else. But you know, I've never had more fun in my life with that. So every, everyone, I'll put a new feature, I'll put a new something, but I also don't want to be the, uh, necessarily the country club Jeep. Um, it is, it, it's awesome. It's an off-road And you get vehicle, dirty with I it? Like to, I keep it clean and everything else as well, but 
but no, I have I have a, a black Jeep that's that's jacked up, um, but not so much that people question what I'm overcompensating for. Yes, so, yes. You, know, uh, you don't want to get to that level, but but uh, listen, we all work hard, and that's my uh, and as it's getting warmer, and even during the the coronavirus, it's nice to go for a drive and keep the uh and take the top off and everything else show us the book again what so the book again let me tell you a couple of things yes, this is please. my opportunity to do a couple of plugs the the book the new book is called why customers leave and how to win them back and it's just about i identified 24 things that frustrate customers that maybe sometimes we're not aware of uh, there's some humor a lot of stories and everything else it's on audible it's on kindle and everything else in six languages around the world but the the program i'm really excited about that i would love you to who are watching or listening to check out is I have a, uh, an initiative that I launched actually just this past January, and we're already in four languages around the world. And it's a weekly video message from me. It's not motivational. It's hard content. And it's called the Customer Experience Advantage Morning Huddle. And the idea is, and whether you use this resource or not, get together with your team once a week. It's a seven-minute video that asks some hard questions and challenges your assumptions about how you do business, how you approach your customers or clients and to spark some discussion. And some of them will do it at the end of a staff meeting. Some of them will do with a, a 20 minute conversation as well. But, but take a look at it because it delivers every week and you decide which day you wanna play it, but it's, it's asking questions of your own team. Cause I think the best answers come from your own team. You understand who your customers are, but it's a different way of thinking because we're thinking differently. So here's the website I would love you to go take a look at. Okay. Um, and it's super cheap, like super cheap because I'm just trying to get as many people involved as possible, go to customerexperienceadvantage.com. You see some sample videos, explains what the, what the initiative is, but we have, we have thousands of, of people every week getting this and, and it's inspiring, but it's high content and there's some humor and some stories and it's all me. Customerexperienceadvantage.com. Take a look at it. I think you'll find it um, really relevant to how you're doing business as we look to build our businesses today. Okay. And I have one, I have two more questions. What does 10X sure. mean to you? 10X? 10X means um, explosive growth and not slow and steady growth. It means doing something extraordinary and remarkable that allows you to scale. If it's just a better marketing campaign, we do a little bit better. If it is, uh, here's a new product, then maybe we can sell some more. But if you're really uh, creative in your thinking, like this is the time, there's some, there are businesses that won't survive. You know, I know Dave's doing everything he can to help you make sure that you do, but there's some people who won't. There's an opportunity to, at probably some good prices, to go buy a competitor. And all of a sudden you've doubled your size. And maybe there's an opportunity through some new technology that we can expand our market reach and have multiple locations, that gives us an opportun our opportunity to 10X. Create a subscription program in your business so not every sale is a one-off, but that somebody can buy a subscription and you get they get to see you. Then you get reoccurring revenue that you can count on that can grow exponentially. That becomes a 10X. But just being good at what you do being really good at what you do, that's the entry. That's that true. just gives you permission to do business. That's just coming market. to work. That's just coming to work. We all have to do that. But you want to 10X your business, do something that will allow you to scale. Excellent. You're gonna, you're also going to find some some commercial space out there, I bet, that you've always wanted Cheaper. available. You betcha. <laughs> so, People David, to negotiate today. where can we find you on all the social media platforms? Everywhere. Just search my name. It's David Averin, A-V-R-I-N. Just search me on YouTube. Search me online. You'll see hundreds of pages of all of my stuff. Of course, my website is davidaverin.com and the uh, new initiative is customerexperienceadvantage.com. Excellent. I'm halfway through your book. It's awesome. I already have a couple other books from you. I appreciate you being on the show. Absolutely, I think a, a lot friend. of the guys, you know, they're going to see that the things that I talk about every day are the things you're already backing up. You talk to customers, crowds all over the world. I will be in your neck of the woods here as soon as all this craziness ends. I'll be at Colorado Springs, but flying into Denver in the tinted uh, uh, the, uh, yeah. and let's, on, in your book about the, grab, grab about, lunch along okay. the way. In your book about the, I didn't know that about the, uh, the carousel thing. That was a pretty good story there. I did not know about that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. About the, uh, the baggage. Yes. Yeah, so I lived in rapid city for a while. So, uh, I, I, we, that was like the closest town was Denver. 
seven hours away. Yeah. But so lots of books out there. Go on Amazon. You can see the other books that I have. The new one is Why Customers Leave. Yes. And the best marketing one is called Visibility Marketing. All right, enough plugs. All right. Thank you, David. You have a great right, day friend. and we'll be in touch. All right. To you as well. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye.